I'm not a professional counsellor, therapist, or medical professional. This is just my opinion about depression and stoicism. This is not meant to be taken as professional advice on mental health. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that originated in ancient Greece and was started by Zeno of Citium, later further developed by Roman philosophers such as Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius. Stoicism offers valuable insight and practices that can potentially help individuals who suffer from depression. It provides a framework for understanding and managing emotions, cultivating resilience, and finding inner peace. However, it's important to note that depression is a complex condition that often requires professional help, especially when dealing with chemical imbalances in the brain or suicidal thoughts. Seeking medical assistance should always be the first step in such cases. Hey guys, Henry here from Our Freedom Formula. Today we're touching on how Stoicism can help people suffering from depression. Before delving into the potential benefits of Stoicism for depression, it's crucial to differentiate between depression and general sadness. While sadness is a natural human emotion that arises in response to specific events or circumstances, depression is a mental health disorder characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and a lack of interest in daily activities. Depression often involves disruption in neurotransmitter function, leading to chemical imbalances in the brain. The distinction between sadness and depression is crucial because managing depression requires more than just changes in perspective or adopting philosophical approaches. But that being said, Stoic philosophy can provide individuals with practical tools to cope with and navigate the challenges presented by depression. Here are some key principles and practices that can be helpful. Number one, acceptance. The concept of acceptance is a fundamental aspect of Stoicism that can be applied to managing depression. Epictetus's quote, Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. It highlights the importance of recognizing the limits of our control and directing our energy towards what is within our power. Here are some practical tips for applying acceptance to depression. Point A. Identify what is within your control. Start by making a list of factors that contribute to your depression. Some aspects may be outside your control, such as past events or other people's behaviours. However, there are elements that you can influence, such as your thoughts, behaviours and daily routines. For example, you may have no control over a recent job loss or a relationship breakup that triggered your depression. However, you can control your response to these events, such as seeking support, practicing self-care, or exploring new job opportunities. Point B. Focus on your reactions and attitudes. While you cannot control external events, you have the power to control your reactions and attitudes towards them. Recognize that your thoughts and beliefs about your depression influence how you experience it. By cultivating a mindset of acceptance and resilience, you can gradually shift your perspective and approach to managing your condition. For instance, if you experience a setback or relapse in your journey towards recovery, instead of dwelling on self-blame or frustration, accept it as a temporary setback and focus on what steps you can take to get back on track. Point C. Practice reframing and cognitive restructuring. Stoicism encourages individuals to examine their thoughts and beliefs critically. When negative or irrational thoughts arise, challenge them and reframe them into a more realistic and helpful perspective. For example, if you find yourself constantly thinking, I'm worthless and nothing will ever get better, challenge this thought by considering alternative viewpoints. Reframe it as, I may be facing challenging times, but my worth as a person is not defined solely by these circumstances. There are steps I can take to improve my situation and seek support. Number two, focus on the present moment. The stoic emphasis on living in the present moment can be particularly helpful for individuals experiencing depression. Seneca's quote, we suffer more in imagination than in reality, underscores the tendency of our mind to generate excessive worries and anxieties that often don't reflect the actual circumstances we're facing. Here are some practical tips for applying this principle. Point A. Develop mindfulness practices. Mindfulness involves intentionally bringing your attention to the present moment without judgment. 
Regular mindfulness practices can help train your mind to focus on the here and now, reducing rumination and anxiety associated with depressive thoughts. One practical technique is mindfulness breathing. Take a few minutes each day to sit in a quiet place, close your eyes and bring your attention to your breath. Notice the sensation of each inhale and exhale, allowing yourself to fully experience the present moment. When your mind wanders, gently bring it back to the breath. Point B, engage in sensory experiences. Engaging your senses can help anchor you in the present moment and divert your attention away from the depressive thoughts. Take time to engage with activities that stimulate your senses, such as listening to calming music, enjoying a warm bath, savoring a delicious meal, or appreciating the beauty of nature. For example, if you're feeling overwhelmed by depressive thoughts, you can go for a walk in a park and immerse yourself in the sights, sounds and smells around you. Observe the colors of the flowers, the sounds of the birds chirping, or the feeling of sunlight on your skin. By actively engaging your senses, you can cultivate a greater connection with the present moment. Point C, practice gratitude. Gratitude exercises can help shift your focus towards the positive aspects of your life and the present moment. Take a few moments each day to reflect on things you're grateful for, whether big or small. It could be the support of loved ones, a pleasant interaction with a stranger, or simply the comfort of a cozy bed. By consciously directing your attention to what you appreciate in the present moment, you can counteract the tendency to dwell on negative thoughts and cultivate a more positive mindset. Point D. Challenge future-oriented worries. Depression often involves excessive worrying about the future, leading to feelings of anxiety and uncertainty. Stoicism encourages individuals to question the validity of such worries and recognize that they often arise from our imagination rather than actual reality. When you find yourself consumed by worrying about the future, ask yourself if there is any evidence to support those concerns. Consider whether you have control over the situation or if the worry is based on assumptions or uncertainties. By critically examining these worries, you can begin to shift your focus back to the present moment and address the things within your control. Number three, value inner virtues. The Stoic philosophy places great emphasis on the development of inner virtues as a means to cope with the challenges presented by depression. Marcus Aurelius's quote from his meditations, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. It underscores the stoic belief that our mindset and inequalities play a significant role in our well-being. Here are some practical tips for cultivating inner virtues. Point A. Cultivate resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity and maintain a sense of inner strength. In the face of depression, developing resilience can help individuals navigate through difficult times and maintain hope. One practical way to cultivate resilience is through reframing challenges as opportunities for growth. Instead of seeing depression solely as a burden, view it as an opportunity for self-reflection, personal growth and learning. Focus on the lessons you can derive from the experience and identify how they can contribute to your personal development. Point B. Seek wisdom and knowledge. Stoicism encourages individuals to engage in lifelong learning and the pursuit of wisdom. By seeking knowledge about depression, its causes and available treatments, individuals can empower themselves to make informed decisions and take proactive steps towards managing their condition. For example, read books or articles on depression, attend support groups or therapy sessions, and engage in conversations with mental health professionals. The more knowledge you acquire about depression and its management, the better equipped you'll be to make informed choices and develop effective coping strategies. Point C. Practice self-discipline. Self-discipline involves exerting control over your actions and emotions, even when faced with challenging circumstances. For some people, this can be a tough pill to swallow. In the context of depression, 
Self-discipline can help individuals establish and maintain healthy habits, such as sticking to daily routines, engaging in self-care activities, and implementing coping strategies. One practical tip is to set achievable goals and establish a structured routine. Start with small manageable goals that align with your overall well-being, such as maintaining a regular sleep schedule, incorporating physical exercise into your routine, or engaging in activities that bring you joy. By practicing self-discipline and sticking to these goals, you can build a sense of accomplishment and contribute to your overall well-being. Point D. Foster self-compassion. Self-compassion is the practice of treating yourself with kindness and understanding. It involves acknowledging and accepting your own struggles and emotions without judgment or self-criticism. In the context of depression, practicing self-compassion can help individuals navigate the challenges with greater self-care and understanding. Treat yourself with kindness, practice positive self-talk, and engage in healthy, self-soothing activities that bring comfort. Number four, practice self-reflection. Self-reflection and mindfulness are essential practices in Stoicism to gain insight into yourself and transform negative thought patterns. Marcus Aurelius advises, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. It emphasizes the significance of examining your thoughts and cultivating a positive mindset. Here are some practical tips for practicing self-reflection. Point A. Set aside dedicated time for self-reflection. Set aside regular periods for self-reflection. Find a quiet and comfortable space where you can be alone with your thoughts without distraction. For example, you might choose to spend 10 to 15 minutes each day in the morning or evening for self-reflection. During this time, journal about your thoughts, emotions and experiences. Reflect on your interactions, challenges and personal growth. This practice can help you gain a deeper understanding of yourself and your patterns of thinking. Point B. Observe your thoughts and emotions without judgment. When practicing mindfulness, adopt a non-judgmental stance towards your thoughts and emotions. Allow them to arise without labeling them good or bad. Instead, simply observe them with curiosity and acceptance. For instance, if you notice a negative thoughts such as self-criticism or self-doubt, acknowledge them without judgment. Recognize that they are simply thoughts passing through your mind, and they don't define your worth or reality. By observing your thoughts without attaching yourself to them, you create space for more constructive and positive thinking to emerge. Point C. Challenge negative thought patterns. Once you become aware of negative thought patterns through self-reflection, challenge them by examining their validity and consider alternative perspectives. Stoicism encourages individuals to question irrational or unhelpful thoughts and replace them with more rational and constructive ones. For example, if you notice a recurring thought pattern that says, I'm a failure and everything I do goes wrong, challenge it by questioning the evidence supporting that belief. Consider instances in your life where you have succeeded or times when things have gone well. Reframe the thoughts by saying, I have faced challenges before and I've overcome them. This is no different. I am capable of learning and growing from these setbacks. While Stoicism can offer valuable perspectives and practices for managing depression, it is crucial to understand the limitations. Depression often involves chemical imbalances in the brain that require medical intervention. However, it is essential to differentiate between depression and general sadness, and to acknowledge that professional medical assistance is vital for addressing depression, especially when it involves suicidal thoughts. If you or someone you know is experiencing depression or having suicidal thoughts, it's imperative to seek immediate medical help. Trained professionals, such as psychiatrists or therapists, can provide the necessary support, guidance and treatment options tailored to the individual's needs. Stoicism can offer practical tools and philosophical insights to help individuals cope with depression. If you got some value out of this video, I bet you smash the like button as well as subscribe and hit the bell icon 
so you'll be notified when we upload more videos. Hey, while you're at it, why not share and also leave a comment down below and let me know what stoic principles you use to cope when you're feeling down or sad. Just so you know, on the top left hand side of the screen, you'll see a video that I believe you might like. Below that is a video YouTube thinks you might like. And if you look on the right side of the screen, you'll see an image of my head. Now if you click on that or poke me in the forehead with your finger, you'll be able to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.